Hello everyone and thank you for joining me. Today we're going to learn about how to set up incremental backups with optional recording using our snapshot and open source utility. In my case I'm using Arch Linux so my package manager I'm using is Pacman so you can grab it from the community repository here but if you're using another Linux or BSD distribution you can go to rsnapshot.org slash downloads.html and here's a bunch of links there that um, <coughs> that lots of maintainers have done ports for and here it is here's our snapshot for Arch Linux and of course Arch Linux uh, wiki has an R snapshot and I would recommend the Arch Linux uh, wiki for the vast majority of Linux tools regardless of what distribution you're running in my case I have an encrypted external hard drive that I want to do my backups on. And for this video, I am using dmcrypt with Lux, and the file system on that is ext4. Encryption is optional, but if you choose to use it, I'd recommend some scripts I generated this morning purely for convenience. So you have uh, a mount and an unmount script uh, that I created, and so all this does is you choose a designated location here and a designated name and you don't you can leave this one alone and it will mount it mount it for you and you do want it in a specific location so it doesn't matter which location you choose uh, in my case I chose MNT backup and that's the default for the script and then when you unmount it it just unmounts it and unmaps it so obviously I posted it on github and I'll go ahead and post a link down below um, it's on and this becomes important when you're in the configurations. Um, so the default R snapshot con configuration, and I made a copy here, which I'd recommend you do before you start, uh, looks like this. So you have a snapshot root and then you have a bunch of other options. Um, so this is the default here which you obviously get when you install it and I'll show you one I'm running with now. And this snapshot root is the one I chose is MNT backup which um, if you noticed was the same <coughs> that the default location here. So wherever it is that you're going to uh, mount your drive encrypted or not uh, it doesn't really matter, it just needs to be one consistent location. Um, that's where your snapshot root is, and if you're using an external hard drive like I am at the moment, then you should uh, choose this option, no create root here. Um, if you're using Linux, you need to enable this uh, this line here and make sure that the path is correct. Um, I think I only found one <coughs> that was one of these paths that were incorrect, but for most of these options we don't need since we're even doing an external hard drive. Um, I'd make sure that <coughs> these commands work. Um, you must have rsync enabled. I would highly recommend uh, rm, cp um, are correct. Make sure the snapshot root is correct, and if you're using an external drive, make sure you uh, set that or uh, uncomment this. And uh, these little hashtags are the comments, so all you have to do is uh, delete it and then it's no longer a comment and if you want to comment something back you just put the little uh, hashtag back. So uh, down here you have some uh, backup intervals and so that's how many of these you want to store and so it'll store seven uh, seven daily backups and then once those, once those seven are it'll uh, save <coughs> your it'll save four weekly ones and then three monthly and so the daily will take straight from uh, whatever you're backing up and then the weekly will take from a week ago of your daily the monthly four weeks ago of your weekly and of course you can go uh, hourly and yearly which um, I have both of those disabled and you might be able to go by minutes as well um, but again I would definitely recommend uh, checking out the Arch Linux uh, the Arch Linux wiki here and it has lots of details here and of course there's the internet and uh, you also have the comment section below if you have any questions about that and so for the first time I set my 
logging level. This is this will log to the console right here. I set that to five just to make sure everything was working. And then once I verified it was working, I kicked it back down to three, and I'll show you what three looks like. And if you want a log file, you can have that. I have that disabled. And if you want to exclude or include any um, any files, or in this case, uh, if it says include or exclude, these will be directories. You have to make sure you put <coughs> that trailing slash there, so, and it tells you that here at the top. It says directories require a trailing slash, obviously, and um, everything here requires a tab. So in between no create root and one is a tab. It's not a space. If you have a space, um, you'll get it incorrect, but there's a way to test to make sure this configuration file, um, you didn't mess it up somehow. So if we, um, so in this case, I don't want to include this folder for whatever reason. I said uh, home, my home directory, documents, and p. So I didn't want to include that for whatever reason. Um, if you want to include or exclude specific files, you just follow this format. It's pretty self-explanatory, and there's plenty of comments here. And of course, you have the internet and the comment section, like I said before. Um, so in my case, I chose uh, I want to back up home, Etsy, uh, USR local, boot. Uh, OPT and then a couple of random files there um, which I could have put these files specifically up in the include files so I decided not to um, and then you have plenty of other options here so once you got all that done um, and in my case I'm using nano you could use vim or uh, any of the graphical managers or any of the command line managers it doesn't really matter but you do need sudo permissions because it is an Etsy of course um, so a way you can test to make sure uh, that your configuration file is correct is to run, uh, in my case, sudo snapshot config test. You may not need sudo permissions, but for mine I do, and uh, it comes out telling me syntax is okay. And I did get this wrong a ton of times before. So it'll definitely let you know if uh, something in that configuration file uh, that you modified uh, is incorrect. And again, I recommend uh, backing it up. In my case, I put uh, dot default at the end, I just did a cp command, I copied it over, and I'd recommend doing that in case you screw up, and that way you can just uh, replace it. And as a final verification, um, you can do sudo or snapshot, and the dash t option um, is to test. So this will print out all the commands that it'll try to do um, once it runs. So as you can see here, it uses rsync in the back end and it does a few other commands. It's not going to show every single one because it, it does some verifications um, that because it didn't actually do it, it's not going to do the verification. This is basically what's going to run. Uh, obviously, it, it excludes that folder that I wanted excluded earlier. And since I set this as daily here, it's going to try to back it up as daily. I already have a daily.0 in my backup, but I don't have that mount I don't have that mounted yet. So it should go to daily point one because I only have the one. I just started using the system. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in my external USB drive. And what I'm going to do is it's actually encrypted. So I'm going to use my script here. I'm going to mount it. And <clears throat> this is the one I just plugged in here. And I know that one is the encrypted one. So using my script just type in the partition here and this is encrypted with uh, deencrypt with lux and so now it's asking me for the password and of course my scripts are uh, license for the scripts is the three clause modified BSD license so you're free to share it or use it or uh, you can do quite a lot, but if you want to give it a uh, read, it's not that bad. There's a license here, and uh, that's pretty short there. It's not that bad. It just uh, protects me, and there's a few other disclaimers there, which I def definitely give it a read because it's not that long. And, of course, I put some comments here about this specific script. Um, if you don't have an encrypted partition, then this will be, be absolutely no use to you at all. I've only verified this to work with uh, the... In a, in a partition encrypted with deencrypt with Lux, uh, and that the file system on that is ext4. It'll probably work with more, but you may have to give it. A, uh, you may have to modify um, these scripts here. And if you do, feel free to uh, fork this or just modify it uh, on your local machine. But as we can see here, 
uh, it went through and I went ahead and said mount. It checks the status. Um, it sees if this exists, which in this case, as we can see here, um, this is where I wanted to do it. And this should match uh, what you said earlier. right here about the snapshot root right there. So slash mnt backup is the same on both and that's where I want to mount it. Of course you don't have to use the script, you could manually do it, but of course that takes a little bit of work which I've already done for you. So there's no need to do it. Um, so it'll go ahead and uh, what the script does is it'll go ahead and check if that already exists, which it doesn't. It'll check if we've decrypted, which I haven't because I just plugged it in. Um, and it runs fdisk-l, which of course my device showed up there and I know that that's on my device. It tells you to enter exactly what I entered. Um, of course, yours probably won't be SDC2, but it could be. Uh, and then it does a crypt setup open and grabs it, and of course you might have to make a few modifications if you're using something other than what I'm using, but um, it'll probably work for other EXT. Um, I mean, there's a lot of uh, automatic detectors that may be useful to you. And as we can see here that it did successfully <coughs> mount it there. And of course this is where the backup comes in. In this case I chose backup. And as we can see here, dev member backup, this is what that variable is for. And this variable is the full path uh, which is specified here. And it's the exact same thing for the unmount script which is uh, shorter as you can see. Let um, me specify dev mapper whatever it is in this case it's backup and it'll decrypt it for me and I'll show you guys at the end uh, how that works so now I will go ahead and show you what's in so this is daily.0 and this is what I did yesterday uh, these are some single backups that I personally did that I don't necessarily want to keep on my main system and I'm okay with if they accidentally get deleted but I do want to keep them for now. So I need sudo permissions because we are in um, MNT and in this case we need sudo permissions so sudo our snapshot I'm going to say daily. I have to give it my sudo permissions and it'll go ahead and and so what this does is if the file has not changed it'll do a, it'll do a hard link and that's where the increment comes in. So if a file hasn't changed, it'll just be a hard link, won't take up any extra space, and if a file has changed, it'll directly copy it over. And so you'll see the commands um, that our snapshot is running here, um, and that's what that log level of 3 means. So if you do 5, it'll print out like everything it's doing, so all the files and whatnot. Um, and of course, most people, most of the time, aren't going to need that level of detail. But if you want that level of detail, you can do that. And of course, you can uh, save all that to a log file uh, by enabling the log file option if you so choose. So I'll let this run, and we'll come back. I'm sorry, I said something a little bit incorrectly earlier. Um, as you can see here at the top, um, it, that didn't take long at all. Probably about you know, a minute or two, and I've changed some files. Not not significant, but. Uh, there were some changes in the files. So when it, what, it, what it does is it rotates. So it rotated from daily 0 to 1, so basically it just moved everything from 0 to 1, and then, uh, like I was incorrectly saying earlier, it actually keeps on, on daily 0. So daily 0 is the most recent, and this is obviously from yesterday. Uh, as we can see here, well, it's not technically yesterday, but it was at 1.33 in the morning, which is almost a full day. Um, so this is the one I just ran and that's how it does its rotations there. And we can tell it's a hard link because it has a 2 here. So in this case, um, I went ahead and CD'd to daily 0, which is now synced to my... It's not synced, it's the same as my hardware. Um, and see, we can see a 2 here, which is an indication of a hard link, and this is another way to tell using stat-c. Um, and a 2 uh, represents a hard link and one is would be a normal file. So if we take a look, we can see see that MNT backup is obviously still mounted. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to my home directory, and we're gonna go ahead and say, you know, and 
unmount, and of course MNT backup is right here, and then the dev mapper backup, which is there, is right here. And of course, if in, in any stage, uh, these mount and unmount uh, should both work. So, um, if if I said for the heck of it, if I said mount. Um, <coughs> It's already mounted, so it shouldn't try to mount again. And it says uh, MNT backup is active. So obviously, uh, the scripts are smart enough to know whether um, <coughs> at what stage it is mounted or unmounted. So let's go ahead and unmount it using the script. And there we go. And of course, it prints out DF dash H at the end, and it's gone. So here we can see it's mounted, and it's no longer mounted at all. Um, so we can go ahead and pull out the drive, which obviously I just did there, and my system's not going to complain because it successfully got unmounted. So make sure you check these statuses to make sure it did, because if you have a file open, um, I didn't account for that. So if you have a file open or, or something else, um, make sure you look, look at the errors real quick, and you know if it says done and you know looks good, I would trust the script. And if you don't, then and if you find something wrong with the script, um, no big deal. Just go into here and submit a bug report or uh, go ahead and fork it or whatever way you want to let me know that something isn't working correctly for you. So I can guess I can go ahead and read through the readme file I suppose real quick um, and like I said you may have to modify the script if you have other encryption types or file systems different than ext4 um, or dmcrypt with lux you may or may not be successful with other systems without modifying it but obviously there's no guarantees there. Um, you need to set destination location and destination crypt to how you want. Um, you don't really have to set destination crypt at all and um, if the path where you say destination crypt, for example, if you went with the default of mnt slash backup and you don't actually have that, um, it'll create it for you. So, or it'll at least try. If you take a look in the script here, um, you're, it says checking if Designated location exists, which you saw in the uh, terminal there. And if it doesn't, if it doesn't exist, which is what this line is here, then it'll try to create it, and it'll tell you whether it created it, or if, it, or it'll tell you if it failed. So obviously, if you leave it at defaults, so that'll work. But make sure that configuration file for our snapshot is the, is the same, and that's the entire point of this. These scripts, so you can have a consistent location when you mount it. So our snapshot knows how to back up your system. So obviously the only manual user intervention that should normally be needed is when you're trying to mount it, you have to specify which partition. Of course it does the F disk dash L, which will show you the available partitions to be mounted. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope everything made sense. Uh, if anything did, please leave a comment below. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel. You can of course catch me on Google Plus. Thanks for watching.